The UNESCO Man and Biosphere Program, a pioneering idea, a global project and a challenge for humanity. All of these places and landscapes, which are so different and so far apart from each other, have something in common. All of these people from different cultures live and work in areas in which they pursue a common objective. All this nature and the people who live in it are part of the biosphere reserves. In the middle of the 20th century, the human race for the first time raised the crucial question for its future. Is the progress of civilizations compatible with the conservation of nature? In 1971, UNESCO conceived the Man and Biosphere program and answered the question. Depletion of resources brings with it firstly the disappearance of ecosystems and later the civilizations. There is only a future when a responsible use is made of the resources based on the respect of the environment and when there is an environmentally friendly society and economy. Sixteen years later, this idea was summarized in two words, sustainable development. But where to start? Where can we test this innovative approach? The MAB program proposed the creation of some areas committed to the conservation of nature and with a model of lasting socio-economic development in the long term, where local cultures and traditions are respected. These places were called biosphere reserves. Each country can ask for the UNESCO's designation for one or more reserves as long as they take responsibility for its good functioning. UNESCO declares the new reserves by decision of the International Coordinating Council of the Man and Biosphere Program. This same council has developed over the years a number of documents such as the Seville Strategy or the Madrid Action Plan that have served as a guide to countries and reserves in order to achieve a common objective, the sustainable development in the world network of biosphere reserves. The Man and Biosphere program offers a message of hope and suggests that we think globally and act locally. Our future as a species and as cultural beings depends on us learning to live in a harmonious way with nature. Probably the only way to overcome this context of environmental crisis that we are experiencing at this time is from training and knowledge. The biosphere reserves have an important role in assessing the impact of climate change, but above all are a good indicator of this process of climate change, and by extension global change, that is unquestionably biodiversity. Biodiversity is an extraordinary bioindicator, and without doubt the biosphere reserves have an important place in the branch of science and then especially in the educational function, that is to say, a very important part in the mitigation and will have a direct relation to the degree of citizen motivation and also the degree of motivation of managers as well as people who make policy decisions. In 2014, there are 631 biosphere reserves distributed throughout 119 countries. All the ecosystems and cultures on the planet are represented in the world network of biosphere reserves. Millions of people live and work in the biosphere reserves. Biosphere reserves, much more than a natural protected area. Without people, there are no biosphere reserves. They are part of them. 
they will be the engine of the reserve and upon them will depend the fundamental objective, the coexistence between man and nature, the development of society and the respect for the natural, geological and cultural heritage. In a reserve, we seek sustainable development models and we approach this goal by promoting projects in very different areas – sustainable tourism, scientific investigation, organic production, supporting local traditions. But how is a biosphere reserve created? Are the people who live in the areas those who take the initiative? Associations, municipalities and regional public authorities, after following a process of participation in which the project is disclosed to the population of the future reserve, prepare a project proposal for the creation of the reserve. The proposal will include several key aspects that will be essential so that the reserve works, thus the reserve must be zoned. A core area will need to be defined which is dedicated to the conservation of ecosystems. A transition zone will have to be defined whose most important function is the social and economic development of the population. And finally, a buffer zone will be marked out which will be sandwiched between those two areas and which will aim to minimize the negative effects of human activities in the core area. A reserve should have a management team to implement projects important to the reserve. It is essential to have a body of participation so that the inhabitants of the reserve can actively collaborate in the management of the reserve. The managers, with the support of the body of participation, will be responsible for developing a plan for the reserve in which it is indicated which projects will be carried out in the reserve. It is UNESCO, through the Man and Biosphere programme, that the international organisation receives and approves the proposal. A new Biosphere Reserve is born. The Biosphere Reserves are no longer protected areas. Their creation is based on a voluntary commitment of people and in search of a balance between the conservation of our environment and traditions, as well as the welfare of the people and social development. In the reserves, there are many examples of human and respectful activities compatible with the conservation of the natural heritage. Well, in the region of El Espinar, there is a very important forestry tradition. On the one hand, the wood, the Scots pine, has presented the number one income to the municipal coffers. And as for the resources of the neighborhood of El Espinar, this is based fundamentally on the collection of firewood. It's an area where there is no agriculture, where industry is scarce, livestock is based on single-family farms. Therefore, the only economic resource was the forest, which meant going to the mountain for wood, which helped them to maintain their homes and families. The work that the forestry officers have carried out is very important in its conservation, together with the cabarreros, the men who carry down the firewood, the woodmen, the ranchers, as well as the hunters. The combination of all the efforts that were made in the field, preserving and respecting the forest environment, has meant that today we have a wonderful enclave, which has resulted in it being declared a biosphere reserve. There are some reserves with up to 47 representative groups in their participating bodies. Some reserves house large cities within their boundaries, quite a challenge. Scientific research and ancient traditions, there's room for everything in a reserve. The Spanish Network of Biosphere Reserves, a place for cooperation. Four bioclimatic regions converge, Alpine, Atlantic, Mediterranean, and Macaronesian. The Spanish network of biosphere reserves extends through all of these, which gives you an idea of its great diversity. Currently, this network consists of 45 biosphere reserves, two of which extend beyond our borders. In Portugal, the cross-frontier biosphere reserves of Jerez Jures, and in Morocco, the Intercontinental del Mediterraneo. 
In the international context, the Spanish network of biosphere reserves is really a recognized network. It is a network that has worked hard, and an example of this is the contribution that the Spanish state has given over time in terms of the plans under UNESCO. Another important example of this is how initially they were declared biosphere reserves by the Spanish state. They were one of the first countries to create biosphere reserves in the year 1977 and bring, in addition, 45 reserves in a context that currently is made up of 631 reserves in 119 different countries. The work philosophy in the network of the Spanish network of biosphere reserves is to be able to save all the experience gained over many years, both successful and unsuccessful, in order to continue moving forwards, to avoid making the same mistakes and thus spread knowledge and benefit from each other. The types of uses that occur in the network are varied. It can be any type of use of the medium provided that it is done in a respectful manner and always provided it is not done, as I say, at the expense of the environment but respecting it and with some items of sustainability. It should be noted that the reserves are an instrument by which a program of social and economic development can be established and with time sustained. Therefore, trying to ensure that man and biosphere work together in this program. The work in the network is collaboration, exchange of information and experiences in order to achieve between everyone a common objective, that the reserves are areas where nature, society and economy constitute the pillars of development. To achieve coordination and smooth communication in the Spanish Biosphere Reserves Network, several ingredients have been required. Firstly, there are some rules which determine who is who in the network. Secondly, a group that makes decisions and in which are represented the autonomous regions where there are reserves and also the social groups most involved. This is a Spanish committee of the MAP program, whose function is coordinated by the National Parks Agency. In addition, there are two groups advising the committee. One of them is the Board of Managers, which includes all reserve managers, and the other is the Scientific Council. Finally, to facilitate the relationship between these two groups is the National Parks Agency, which organizes the meetings and serves as a communication channel. The inhabitants of the reserves, their managers, the scientific community, public administrators, NGOs, tourism and agriculture, among others, are represented in the network and participate in decision-making through the MAP committee. The work of the network has allowed the Spanish network of biosphere reserves to have a system of assessing the state of stocks, a brand of quality a signposting manual for the reserves, numerous scientific studies, traveling exhibitions, several informative publications, an image bank, etc. The Spanish network of biosphere reserves is one of the most active and structured national networks that exist in the world. All of its components are important all together they join forces so that the biosphere reserves are a benchmark in the pursuit of sustainable development. More than 1,800,000 people live within the Spanish biosphere reserves. The total area that the Spanish network of biosphere reserves occupies is superior to that of countries like Switzerland or Denmark. More than 100 people are involved in the coordination of the Spanish network of biosphere reserves. Successful experiences in the biosphere reserves towards sustainable development. The biosphere reserves are test sites, places where there is a commitment to putting theory into practice. They look for development capable of satisfying the current needs of people without compromising the resources and possibilities of future generations. 
sustainable development is sought. And the biosphere reserves are also a clear opportunity to create jobs and to create value in rural areas. There are great opportunities in agriculture, the agro-food sector, in organic production, in products from the sea and river estuaries, and not only in this sector, but also new and more innovative products linked to the environment. This does not happen alone. Firstly, it is necessary to identify these opportunities in each one of the reserves, working with entrepreneurs, giving them training and tools, because it is the brand of the biosphere reserves for the products and services of the reserves. Obviously, it will be added value for those products and for the markets that know how to appreciate and recognize this added value of our products. In the Spanish network of biosphere reserves, there are numerous examples, but maybe it will be instructive to focus on three key sectors – energy, tourism and agriculture. Energy The obtaining and supply of fossil fuels generates possibly the greatest environmental impact on the planet. The biosphere reserves are committed to renewable and self-sufficient energy sources, for example, in several reserves, biodiesel is produced from vegetable oils. There are desalination plants that are powered by wind energy. And ice is produced from solar energy in the biosphere reserve of Fuerteventura. But undoubtedly, the most significant event is the recent inauguration of the wind energy power station of Corona in the biosphere reserve of El Hierro, which will enable it to be the first island in the world to supply itself solely from renewable energy. Tourism Given the arrival of mass tourism, seeking sun and beach holidays, many biosphere reserves are offering an alternative model for minorities, which, with a high standard of facilities and services, based on respect, understanding and enjoyment of nature and local culture, offer a wide range of tourist activities. My name is Enrique. We have a hiking and excursion company on the island. It is an island that we have fallen in love with and with which we have decided to share our continuing projects in order to deserve the title of Biosphere Reserve. In this way, it is contributing not only to creating new jobs and preventing the depopulation of rural areas, but to conserve and enhance the natural and cultural resources. We are more than 30 establishments that represent this brand of Rio Mandeo Refugios. This is a brand that has existed before the creation of the Biosphere Reserves and is based on the Rio Mandeo, which is the backbone of this reserve, apart from its shores. We, who always work with a local product, sustainable tourism, and the reserve is the perfect setting to achieve a quality brand which represents us both nationally and globally. In 2008, the Principality of Asturias signed a collaboration agreement with the Secretary of State for Tourism to develop the Biosphere Reserve Tourism Product Club with the intention of promoting the development of tourism in an area where there were already several biosphere reserves established, such as Picos de Europa, Redes, Somiedo, Muñellos, Fuentes de Narcea and Dos Coseo. During this process, a number of companies, especially related to the tourism sector, benefited from this quality brand and who eventually pledged to meet a number of requirements implicit to the concept of sustainability of the biosphere reserves. Agriculture and livestock The more developed societies demand, with increasing intensity, quality food, whose production is consistent with the conservation of nature and the development of the local economy. It is the rise of traditional and organic products, which are precisely what they have in the biosphere reserves, one of the best areas of development and guaranteed prestigious brand identity. 
Therefore, they are products that, while offering maximum health guarantees, bring added nutritional excellence. First, it was necessary for man to be civilized in his relationship with man. Now, it is necessary for man to be civilized in his relationship with nature. Problems cannot be resolved by thinking in the same way as when they were created. Every person must observe his land and think of solutions for the planet.